Chapter 14, Jack Perrin, The UFO Mystery, The kid Kidnap in Bebedouro, Brazil. This case, we can say that the most amazing of, the, of them all, the previous chapter, if it wasn't the Villas Boas experience, it is typical of a type of adventures that happens very frequently, more fre frequently than we think of. We saw some similar cases in this chapter, and without doubt there will be others that we still ignore. It is impossible to reproduce here the complete report of this kidnapped because it constitutes 16 pages of the number 43 of the first trimester of 1975 phenomenal spatial phenomenon of GEPA so we shall see a summary also based on the article on the initial article of FA FSR, Volume 19, Number 6, November, December of 1973. Okay, let's start, guys. On the 10th of May of 1964, at 7 o'clock, 25 minutes, the train coming from Pedro Nolasco in the state of Victoria was arriving Belo Horizonte. So, Belo Horizonte is in Brazil. Okay, guys. Between the passengers that were going down the train, there was a young man, very poorly dressed, with half a sock on his head, which is very accustomed to the population with... Uh, weak resources so a poor person and they were bringing something which was wrapped in a piece of clothing this wrap was what called the attention of a security inspector inspector of the railways M. the Silva due to the constant thieves that occur of um, copper uh, cables that took him to ask for the documents to the passenger. This passenger answered, I don't have papers, boss, because they were taken, taken from me, but I'm a soldier. The security agents continued the interrogation and examined the con the the um, what was inside that wrap that uh, clothing wrapping he knew that his name was jose antonio da silva and that and that his ordinance was from major celio ferreira second commander of the battalion of gendarme of the military police of Minas Gerais. The security agents heard the story several times without feeling any contradictions from the part of the narrator, though he thought very strange. After he called the reporter of the um, radio station of Guarani and after a quick interview the soldier was sent to quarters. The Major Ferreira impressed with the f uh, physical aspect of this boy. He held him in his house for 24 hours so that he would sleep and eat. On the next day José Araújo 
returned home with much difficulty. The family thought that he was very um, slim, burnt by the sun, with a beard and almost limping. Um, his disappearance from his house during for a week had them worried and even the major had organized a research on the day before. On the 11th of March, the group C-O-A-N-I obtained their first interview with Jose Antonio that was followed by many others, just like a reconst reconstitution um, of the local crimes. Let's see then, the narrative of José Antonio da Silva. 3rd of May at night, José Antonio goes fishing to the, uh, to close to a lagoon in a, in a place called Bubedouro. After, uh, just wait a second. After traveling by bus, part of the of the way there, there it arrives about midnight. He takes his things out of his back. The um, the package where he had. A small tent rolled, he mounted it, he fishes for a certain time, and then he lies down. Uh, on the morning of Sunday, on the, nec on, the, um, on the next day, on Sunday, on the 4th, he wakes up, he, uh, he, uh, uh, sh he puts his tent back in his pack and starts fishing, but he had no luck. Until midday, he, he has um, a can of sardines, and he starts fishing again. About 15 hours on the afternoon, he's, he, he, see, he sees vaguely some forms moving behind him, and he listens to a a noise to actually he listens to several noises he listens to a scream similar to uh, um, when you when you exhale from the bottom of your throat and he feels a jet of fire in the direction of his legs. He suffers. Um, okay, he suffers. It's it's that thing on on your calf muscles when you run for a lot of time, you start cramping. Okay, he suffers a cramp. And he starts to feel his legs falling. He he falls on his knees, and he. Uh, drops his uh, fishing rod. The jet looked like fire, but it wasn't. It was a green ray. In a few seconds, he finds himself in the middle of two individuals, masked, and they grab him by his uh, armpits and they um, drag him to a, a, a little denser part of the um, of the woods these woods they call them swamp land okay guys where he finds a third element identical to the others the three were bringing a sort of a weapon similar to what had striked him the attackers had about 1 meter 20 of height, so they were short. 
um, they brought a, a, a brilliant, uh, a like shiny suit with a clear color articulated on their knees and their, um, between their arm and forearm. Um, their heads were covered by a mask or a helmet that it was uh, dull gray, just like aluminium. At the level of the eyes, there were two round holes with about two centimeters diameter. This mask, uh, it's enlarged over the shoulders and the lower part, it left a sort of a tube, maybe plastic, that finished on a small little box that was on the back of this man, passing on the... Um, passing over his, uh, where the arms bend. You could see a machine waiting for them uh, between the trees. It was over a small street, a little muddy, and it felt, uh, it was a little bit inclined. It was formed by a vertical cylinder that had fixed on the extremities two parts in the form of a, lent a lens, lenticular form, with a diameter bigger than the cylinder. The plaques uh, were inclined. They connected both domes. The cylinder looked gray and the lenticular parts were dark. José, once introduced inside of the device, found himself inside a compartment, a square-sized compartment, about two meters by two meters. It was all dark gray, looked like a stone. Uh, there were also two small seats, and José was seat, he sat on a large bench between the two guards a third guard sat on a smaller one in the middle the light on this compartment was intense just like uh, the the light of the compartment was intense just like the vapor of mercury and José didn't know where it came from. When they sat down, uh, when they sat him down in the middle of uh, another bench, the two beings that accompanied him put over his head um, a helmet just like theirs. This helmet also had a tube that was going down the back. José did not see if they also put this tube connected to a box, box just like the others had, but they, he had the impression that they didn't. Afterwards, the members of the crew, um, they used um, sort of a, a little chain, a uh, rugus chain, uh, to, to, um, to immobilize him on the feet and his belt. Then uh, they also uh, put, they also chained it to themselves so that he was connected to them. Um, on the journey, then, one of these crew members uh, started m moving a small lever that was on the floor and José heard a noise that was coming on the upper part of the device. At the same time, he had the sensation of lifting off. Then the pilot uh, maneuvered 
an, a bigger uh, lever that was on top on the right and this time the soldier heard a sound coming from the lower part of the device. After liftoff, the beings started talking about it between each other. Uh, they were quite uh, with the bit animosity, guys. They were uh, several times looking at Jose that he didn't understand anything, evidently. The sounds pronounced finished frequently by the sound R and they were guttural guttural sounds so er 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 like pirates maybe when the device raised uh, antonio had more difficulty on breathing he also felt as well as his ty moral tiredness his body was almost getting very tired physically almost paralyzed he was uh, not very comfortable because of the roughness and the form of the seat and his and how the legs were weak as well the heaviness of the, the of the of the helmet was hurting his neck and its shoulders so maybe guys his this um this mask that they put him was something due to either the lack of oxygen or maybe because of going away from the atmosphere or maybe to protect him from some rays or something like that for some solar rays or or radiations i'm not sure guys um after a period of the journey that looked like it was never gonna finish he noticed that the inside light of the cabin was becoming stronger and was pulsating one hour later the light that almost made him close his eyes reduced and straight away the journey went with nothing happening that worried him nothing special happened until the moment of that device gave the sensation that it was doing a rotation about 90 degrees over his um over his um i don't know how to say this over his head he noticed um the seats adapted alone to this position so he noticed that they turned after a long period the device and the seats went to the initial position uh, much later the device landed and Antonio felt like a shock. Um, when he landed, the small man unhooked him and they put him kind of uh, something over his eyes of his helmet so that he couldn't see. And they looked, looked like they were all very happy and talkative. They took him to the exterior by his arms jose heard then a noise of uh, a big a lot of people and they were talking and a lot of walking around this voice was exprimming the same language language as the aggressors there were noises more profound than others but none looked like it was feminine afterwards he know he felt like he was sitting on um on a seat and they took the blinds off he noticed that he was in a big compartment with about 20 to 15 meters and about about 15 meters from him 
there was a being much taller, a little bit taller than the other, not much taller, a little bit taller, about 1 meter 25. And he was also well, um, well, cons uh, good, bo good body shape. He didn't bring any special uh, suit, nor a helmet. Um, and and he looked like he was um, he was happy. This man, this being. Um, the attackers of José, then they took their helmets and they talked very animously between, between that man that was in the middle, that must have been the boss. They were all very hairy and had long, um, you know those things that women do on their hair, that they interlace their hair? They had long interlaced red head that went almost to their hips. The boss had a big beard that went to his stomach. They had thick eyebrows and two fingers. They had big eye eyebrows of about two fingers thick that almost... <laughs> Oh, I'm imagining them. That's why I'm laughing, guys. That almost uh, covered their foreheads. The, uh, the eyes were round, bigger than ours, red, uh, dark red, and you couldn't see any eyelashes, and the eyes never blinked. He saw him and started to pray, think thinking that he would never go back. The nose of this being was long and much larger than ours. The mouth was very long and you couldn't see any teeth. It looked like a fish mouth. This little boss looked now very nervous and was moving his hands with all the three attackers of Jose. The fear of the soldier reduced Ben because this being looked like he was a good person. It was then that Jose <laughs> uh, noticed others arriving, arriving, all alike, until there were about 10 or 12 around the boss. We're going to go through, guys. I'm enjoying this and my neck is not hurting. He was amazed because he, when he landed, he saw on top of a small table the bodies of, of four men uh, lying down naked and they looked like they were dead with the eyes closed and rigidity of the, of the cadav cadavers. One of them was dark, very dark. The other one had... Uh, a dark light skin uh, the other two were white one of them had blonde hair they didn't look like they have any wounds on the the living room the walls and the floor looked like they were stone like every other things the table the 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 glass where they gave him some something to drink the seats everything was stone the illumination was very strong and uniforms just like the device and no visible um no visible uh, bumps or or anything like that so it was a very modernistic look like, guys. On the walls... Oh, my neck is starting to hurt, guys. So we're going to go to 30 minutes, okay, guys? 
the walls there were reproductions colored, colored and some familiar to him. Terrestrial animals, vehicles, an Alfa Romeo um, big van and an airplane with a helices, two motors and an automobile on the floor and on the um, corner of the compartment there was a sort of a car uh, a sort of a um, a championship uh, driving car two meters length with a cylindrical body and no openings and no wheels they were substituted by two bumps that even touch that didn't even touch the ground that looked like turbines okay so this looks a little bit like um star wars on the front of jose there was a seat on the cubic form in which the boss had seated himself several times next to him a round table that was used by a sort of um, a drawing board to make drawings with at least three meters length on the middle of all this confusion of the going and coming back of the beings their ge their gestures with their hands the the foreign language jose concluded finally that his presence was very well seen by the foreign beings. He examined their objects. He noticed that he saw one of the men opening very slowly a bag of cloth in which he had brought the material of fishing because when he had been captured he dropped it, everything on the back, on the bag that it um, it spread over the beach. The last member of the committed must have uh, caught them after his capture. Oh, so they 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 minded him. They look at the interest they have from him, guys. I tell you, guys, the aliens, they know us, they joke with us because they are much more evolved than us guys now the little men were taking everything from their bag and were examining every object it, he had some fishing lure, lures some knives and a, 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 a box of matches utensils for fishing a box of sardines and other something and some other food stuff during all this time he was cold because he only had some um, half pants that went to his knees but he was breathing well he noticed that the beings put on his side one of each of the objects that he had in duplicate and they also put um, uh, a bill of a hundred crews a hundred brazilian bucks guys old bucks taken from the 3500 cruises that bucks that he had all of the objects that weren't in duplicate were put again inside the bag and then was carefully closed except his identity card that they passed about uh, once to one to each other and then they um they kept it that caused him a lot of problems on his return. So they kept his identity card, guys. Okay, guys, we're going to leave the... This is first part, okay? Love you very much. Bless you, people.